Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for joining me. Once again, you are always most welcome. Well, this is part four, a final part of our look back at 50 years of matchbox magic. Um, and of course, as promised, I'm going to finish off with one of the things that made Matchbox truly unique and that is their armour kits. Just the, the, the little basic uh, pocket money range, the purple range this time. Uh, and I have got a treat for you because I've got quite a few here that are actually finished. If you tell a little peep out as well, uh, you'll have seen, I think, most of these. I think recently I showed, maybe not the Jag Panther, I'm not sure. Um, but you'll note that quite a few of them, I don't quite go the extra mile in terms of the painting on these because I always want them to look like a matchbox rather than looking like to something too slick and, you know, a modern premium kit. I don't do that. I usually want them to look a little bit like they like they did originally. Um, in fact, the only, the only that are painted truly properly, you could say, are the, the Chaffe and the, the M16 half track. But... These were the ones, of course, that have these lovely dioramas included as part of the kit. This is what makes them absolutely unique. And it really does set them apart from everything else. And I still cannot understand, and I'm sure many of you feel the same way from the comments I've had in the past, why the manufacturers don't get onto this, because it really made them unique. So these were, again, were 25p when they came out in 1973, 74, I think they came out. I'll look at the dates in a second. But included, you didn't just get a tank you know, an armoured vehicle or whatever, a staff car, armoured car, you got a little diorama, a little scene. And as somebody said uh, a couple of days ago, this really, it's not just a model, it's a little story. It's a little, it's a little play, if you like. It's a little bit of action. It's, it's not just a cold, sterile piece of plastic made to look like a tank. It creates a scene, you know. It's like a miniature snapshot from a movie, almost. Or, or real life, still life, if you like. And that really does add something, and that's what makes them so incredibly special. By the way, we've got the birds chirping outside, they're all going crazy, so don't, don't be too far off by that. Anyway, so it's 50 years of Matchbox. I'm going to actually have a glass of, I'm going to have a drink of alcohol, I'm going to raise a glass to Matchbox. Um, don't normally drink this sort of thing at this time of year. A little bit of um, sort of summer rosé wine, which I thought was quite nice, because I think it was in the summer that Matchbox kits actually came out, so I'm probably a little bit ahead of ourselves here. Anyway, here's to Matchbox. Cheers. Mmm. 50 years of great memories, and we have them all here. Now, I'm not going to get all these kits out of the box, so there's no point in that, but what, I'll, what I'm going to like to do is show you the box, the contents of quite a few of them you can actually see right before you, so we'll have a look at those in some detail. So, where to start? Well, I guess we start with the Firefly. Um, so, what I'll do, I'll zoom you in here and let you uh, go down memory lane with me, and to quote from that film again, the Inception film, Leonardo DiCaprio, and Ken Watanabe, where he says to him at the end, he said, come back with me and come back and we could be young men together again, as before. And that's what we're doing here. We're trying to make you feel young again, take you back down memory lane to when you were probably in short trousers. I certainly was. But let's have a look. So what we got here? We have got our lovely little Sherman. I'll have to pick it up. Otherwise I'll be playing around with the camera angle. So we've got this lovely Sherman. It's the Sherman Firefly, of course. Now, again, I haven't done a splendid paint job. These are not these are not my finest work or anything. I, I like them to look a little bit matchbox-like, a little bit like a youngster has still done it, because otherwise they just they'll just merge in with any other tank, you know. And the more serious kits that I've done, um, I've got some nice armor stuff, and I don't want them to to be confused. I want these to look a little bit like matchbox, and that's why I've done it on purpose this way. But that, that, you know, so this is the Firefly, so here we have it. Let's just uh, zoom out. I've got the Chaffe on screen now, it's not quite the right one. This is the one we're talking about. And again, look at the artwork here. Coming up the beach on D-Day. Now this is the one tank, of course, that the Allies had uh, at the start of the Normandy campaign that could actually match the Tiger. Um, the 76mm, sorry, the 17-pound, uh, I should say, uh, was able to penetrate a Tiger, and indeed the King Tiger, um, although I think not at the front. Um, but certainly the sides and the rear. So it was the really most critical tank of the lot. And here we have it. Uh, we've got a date here, 1973, Lesney. There we go. There it is. This is the original with the uh, the little window, which they dropped later on completely on the armour. Um, shows it, of course, uh, on its bridge there. And then we've got 
Uh, we've got two options on this one. We've got the uh, second battalion, the Coldstream Guards, and the second fife of four fire yeomanry in the Rhineland. But the Coldstream Guards is the one that's actually got the model coloured in, uh, and this is the I think that's the uh, the fife and yeomanry, fife and four fife and four fire yeomanry, Scottish regiment, uh, which is in the Rhineland in 1945. So you know, um, I will take this if I can. I will take this out just to show the basic layout. One or two, I always say I'm not going to take them out, and then I do, don't I? And it's because I can feel your eyes saying, just do it, do it, get it out, don't mess about. I want to see it. Oh, here we go then, here we go. So, Sherman Firefly, nice, uh, typical purple range instructions, pair of rubber band tracks, usual thing, and Here's the sprue. Now I'm gonna have trouble with this photography, I can tell you, because uh, I've got those boxes behind, but you basically get a hole. Um, it's not a bathtub style, but you get you get the verges, the grass verges at the side, you get your turrets over on this side. Nicely done actually for a for a pocket money kit, you know, that costs 25 pence. And you get the roadway here, and then you get the actual sides of your bridge here. That side and that side. It's brilliant. I mean, you know, it makes them have so much character, so much more fun than just a silly, you know, model of a tank, which is just bland and boring. Uh, and of course, I suppose the challenge for the designers at Leslie was to try to make the dioramas look a bit different from each other. But that's the that's the Firefly. Probably, I think that was, this might have actually been my first Matchbox. I can't decide if it was this or the Spitfire. Or the Brewster Buffalo. I think it was one of those three. I uh, just can't remember for sure. But um, I know the Comet came along not long after. So here's the Comet. Oops. Here it is. Oops. I'm running over some barbed wire there. So here he is. Again, you'll see I've left the uh, painted the top and not painted the wheels on purpose, just to give it that little bit of a matchboxy look. You know, a uh, little bit of the. Uh, the groundwork. Here's the diorama. It's one of the more basic dioramas, but there's a, there's a puddle, pool, and if you look very closely you can see it's got barbed wire. There's barbed wire running through. Uh, obviously a barbed wire fence has been trampled underfoot by the tracks, so to speak. Um, but I did like the comet. That's the forerunner of the Centurion, isn't it? Um, so there we have that, which is obviously here. So let's have a look at this one. Here we go. And again, a very high action, high drama, bit of uh, artwork. Uh, the Vesa Bridgehead in April 1945, just before the end of World War II, punching through the last resistance in Germany, I guess, before the surrender. Um, and you can see what I was talking about. This one is dated much later. This is an 86 one, and there's no window. There's no window at all. So that's been uh, that's been foregone. Um, okay, so then we move those. I'm going to move them aside, the ones we've seen, so we don't get confused. Now, this is a, a couple of my favourites. I'm honest. We've got the uh, the M16 half track uh, with the finished product here. So let's have a look at the finished one first. <laughs> here we go. So it's Calamity Jane, and it's on the railway tracks in this case. It's like a railway cutting, isn't it? Bit of a crater which has derailed the train, or would derail the train. It certainly stopped any more trains running on this track. And obviously the uh, Calamity Jane is just cutting across here. Uh, the anti-aircraft with its 50 cal, 50 cal anti-aircraft guns. Um, uh, again, that's a, that's a really good one. That's the first time I saw something where they'd used their imagination like that and they brought in a train track and makes it look a little bit a little bit extra, a bit special. So I'm very impressed by that. Nice kit, goes together well. Um, this is actually one of the later uh, latish boxes. Yeah, it's 83, this one. Um, I think I've got an earlier one, but it wasn't in very good condition, so I thought I'd show you a nice newish one. Anyway. Um, and there it is, it's got Fokker Wolf 190s attacking in an airstrike and they're shooting back and giving as good as they are getting. So on the side you get your uh, paint scheme, which is basically olive drab. And then on the back you get to see this uh, 
gives you the idea of what it will look like. Again, what it will look like when it's not painted. That's the idea here. No painting necessary. A little look inside. We know what we're going to get, obviously. But we've got some very na particularly nasty rubber band tracks on this one. The rubber band tracks are not nice, as you can see. Very because it's very short being a half track. Uh, we get, fortunately it's a black and white because this later iterations they drop the colours uh, on the instructions. Uh, but there you go, there's your railway cutting. Just try to block that out. Railway cutting either side and then you've got your chassis and your sides of the, the body, armoured sides. Here is your the railway line as you just saw on the finished one. Uh, and it's nice isn't it, it's really really nice. Uh, it's a nice kit, I've got to say. It's got the towing winch and everything. You've got the, the guns, the wheels, tyres. It's all there. It's all there. You know, I mean, to think you're getting all that for basically, you know, I know it's no longer 1973 uh, when these came out, but you're getting all that for 25 pence is what they were charging for these when they came out. You know, it's, it's remarkable, really. Uh, I mean, I don't know if they made a profit. Sometimes I wonder if Matchbox, I don't know all the details, but I do wonder if they didn't suffer from perhaps not charging enough for their product. Uh, because you do, you do look at it and think, well, you know, if they could make a profit at 25p, why can't Airfix charge £10 and make a profit and do something similar? Why can't they do a diorama? Why are they so resistant to this? If you're out there, Airfix, any of you watching this, come on. I'll tell you now. If you followed this trend and went back down this road, you will sell more kits. I guarantee you will. I guarantee you. Anyway, here's an interesting one. The Hannah Mag. Oh, we have it here. Uh, this is not one of my finer ones because it's one of these that's got missing bits. Uh, I bought a kit on eBay only to find that there was... Uh, the background was missing. And this is the one that has the street. So I've got the wall. I've got the wall, which I'll show you in a second. But let's just have a look at the Hannah Mag first. Uh, I didn't get the whole thing, so I haven't got a proper diorama for this. Here it is. Well, it's cool. It's a nice little uh, high mag. Yeah, your typical... Whoops, and he's fallen off. He's trying to jump off. He's jumped off now. Um, there we go. Nice. Uh, I didn't do the most imaginative paint job, I have to say. This is not, I say it's not my finest hour, for sure. But um, it's a nice little kit. One point of interest I think we should talk about is the artwork on this one because maybe over there. Here's the wall. Um, I'm trying to remember somebody will somebody will shout up in chat, but I'm trying to remember what it says. I translated this once before and I've forgotten. I did a review on this, so if you go back and look at the review you'll you'll see it. Um, but it's basically saying something like brother um, Brother, who are you kidding? The, the, the war is lost, words to that effect. Um, and this is actually an advert, the poster is an advert for the flak towers in Berlin. And obviously some graffiti is trying to say, look, we've lost, and just give it up, you know, basically. Now, I mentioned it's the artwork that's particularly interesting. Now, this is the original boxing, and it's dated 76, yes, I thought it was, 76, this one, one of the later ones that came out. But it has its original artwork, so it's got the Nazi uh, emblem, uh, which we won't go into obviously, but you can see the Nazi emblems on there, the German markings, and it's got a Hawker Hurricane 2C in North Africa trying to do an airstrike on them. If you look very carefully, there it is. And they're shooting up at it. Now, again, this is one of these artworks that got meddled about with by the uh, the PC Brigade, and they actually, and you can see this in the book review if you go and look at it, one of the ones that really upset Roy Huxley, because they made him take the swastika off. They even made him remove the hurricane and the, and the gunfire and everything. I mean, come on, that's just stupid. Absolutely ridiculous. But anyway, at least we have got the original version. I've got two versions. I've got the other one, the later one, where it's just all blank. There's just an empty sky, no Nazi symbol. Ridiculous. But anyway, um, it's interesting that this one, this one has got different graffiti on the wall. Uh, and that's something else that changed. So this is the original graffiti. And what does it say? Black... Something black, Traven, Defura... Something like... Um, somebody, somebody did mention it on the, um, the review I did. And I think he said it stood for... The Fuhrer equals bad luck in effect. That's basically what the, 
you know, it was another recruiting poster for the, the Waffen SS, and it was something like um, Black Values Equals Defeat, or The Fury Equals Defeat, basically. Um, a very negative bit of graffiti against the, uh, the SS. So they're portraying the German people as having a bit more sense, really. That's what's going on. Um, but there you go. So uh, let's have a quick look at it. We, I know you like to see inside the boxes. There we go. So what do we got? Bit of wall. We've got the side plates for the chassis. You've got your wheels and your bonnet. You've got your wall and then your main chassis underneath bogies and you've got your um, side plates, the foot plates, um, mud guards, etc. And on this side again some rather not very pleasant um, rubber bands. This is not their finest point matchbox I'm gonna be honest. And then you get the street. This is the bit that I never got. I never got my street. Another one that has a street now I had the Puma with no street and I got this with no street. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I shouldn't complain because I think this is another case where I complained that where's my street dude and the guy gave me uh, the money back. So I got to keep the, at least I got to keep the vehicle so it's not all bad I suppose. It's got, see the way they've done the um, the little drain grid, that's quite good isn't it? It's nice, nice job. Lots of wheels, you've got these two figures, the guy that's operated the machine gun MG34 at the front and this chap that's jumping down, which I mind he keeps falling off. Nice little model, very nice. So that's your Hannah Mag, which we will now return to its home. This to go back in the box is fairly easy. So that's those sorted. And what have we got? Now then, we've got the Panzer House 3, the Panzer 3. Widely used in the Eastern Front, in the desert, as you can see. Nice artwork. This is an original box, I think it's 73 box this. Yep, 73. And this one has got this nice diorama where you've got, it's not the most imaginative in terms of elements to it, but it's got this uh, like a cattle head skull uh, dried out and parched out in the desert and uh, on like a, a wadi, a uh, little dune. Quite nice, quite a nice kit. Also has it in the, uh, can have it in the eastern front colours, the dark grey, with a little bit of brown. It actually says, it says Western Europe actually there, so maybe that's Normandy, Normandy perhaps. Um, but it's a nice kit, you know, and it's, um, again, it's the uh, sort of thing you can, you can build it in a day. Nice, easy model. Simple diorama, but effective and so much nicer than just having nothing with it. Then, we come on to a couple more. Um, it, here's one actually that I, that I didn't build. I didn't know, I never built this. Um, this is one of the later ones. It's a 1986, is it? Say? It's an 80s one, this. Oh, 1978. It's earlier than I thought. Okay. Yes, I should have realised because it's got the, the window still. They dropped them after 1980. So here, it's, again, it's not a very imaginative diorama, if we're honest. It's just a soldier shooting and a kind of a bit of rubble, which you can see there through the window, can't you? A little bit of a shell hole and some rubble that's going to run over. Panzer Jäger. Um, yeah, I mean it's very, very you know, like a stug, isn't it? This vehicle, to be honest. Uh, I think it had a 76 millimeter gun. I think. I, correct me if I'm wrong. I think that's right. Um, but I never built that one, so I can't comment too much about it. But the others, um, I did build. Did I build the best B? No. Hang on a second. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Let's look at the Vespi, another one of the all-time classics. A real beauty, nice artwork. Again, running down a dune here, and it says the um, Wadi Zainam in Libya, 8th of Jan 1943, big battle against the Africa Corps, last desperate counter-attack of the Desert War. Wow! Before they got knocked out of Africa, and this this is a nicer diorama where you've got a palm tree. And you've got the officer on the lookout, and he's looking at, I think he's got binoculars. And then you've got a mechanic just working on the wheels while they're having a break at the side. See that? <laughs> it's cool, isn't it? That's a really nice one. Let's have a take, take a little look at this. So, I don't think I built this one. Careful. I don't think I built it. 
here we go. So this is, and these colours that they do on these armour, it all seems far more sensible the colours that they choose for their aircraft. So you see the, the tracks run out there where he stops, you've got the palm trees, the fir, sort of fern-like palm tree leaves, you've got the wheels, you've got the mechanic there, which if you look carefully he has got a spanner, a wrench in his hand. See that? <laughs> it's excellent isn't it? And you've got your rather nasty rubber band tracks, less said about them the better really, not the best feature in these kits. But it is an original this one, you can see it's got the proper purple instructions, so you know you've got the proper the proper McCoy as they say. I'm afraid those decals look, no, they're, no, they're, they're dead I think. <laughs> Let's have a look, yeah here we go, get your wheels on, do your rubber band tracks, put your cannon in and then it shows you how to build your diorama and you interleave your your tree leaves to get the final effect and you end up putting all the the top of the uh, the chassis on put your gun in armor goes around the side a couple of turret hatches and, and that's it you're done which is great here we go here's the other spro so it's not a very big vehicle is it actually this one look at that that is so cool so cool absolutely brilliant so there we go, another nice one in the collection, pop that back in its box. Now we get to the ones where we've actually got examples to show you. Um, now I did bring the T-34, but we did see the kit already didn't we? Uh, I think in our first uh, show. So I didn't bring the kit down, but I did bring the finished article for you to see. And again, uh, one of the ones I really liked, I thought they did this very well. It's bashing down a, a wooden fence. Supported by his infantry, storming at the side to support the tank. Really cool. Very nice T-34. Yeah, no messy machine gun on the top. Even did a bit of weathering at the back, a bit of exhaust marking. Uh, and of course it's in the snow, so if you remove the tank, you can see that it's got that sort of browny pinky snow underneath. That's where the muddy's churned up. <laughs> Wonderful. Now then, how about one of the favourites? I know a lot of people like this one, and a lot of people have this kit. The Puma armoured car. And this one is saying it's been used in the Battle of Arnhem. Uh, you've got you've got an option of two colour schemes. You've got the Arnhem scheme, or you can go with the dark grey scheme. And it's a really nice looking little vehicle, is this? Uh, it's got a big, big gun on it. Which I think is a, again, I think it's a, a 75mm cannon, isn't it? Let's have a look what it says. Let's have a look inside. And this is the one where I, um, when I built it, I, I got no street again on this one, no street. So I have uh, a streetless version. But they, they come with some really nice figures now. Look at these chaps that they come with. Look at this. Check it out. This is really cool. So you get a guy looking through his binoculars telling him to fire, you've got a stormtrooper with a machine pistol, looks like an MP40, and then you've got a, an officer with his uh, pistol, which I think, it's a little bit bent actually, but I think it's a Walther LP38, or it's supposed to be, P P38, yeah. And then you've got all your wheels, and then you've got your various bits of street pavement, on the actual street itself, complete with the, uh, the shell hole, where it's gone down to the, what looks like the mains you can see the mains pipes, electric cabling and you've got your, uh, your grid as well nice sprue on this side you've got all your chassis uh, and your armoured car hull and the side protection armour plating top of the turret front, the bogies it's got like wishbone suspension it would appear, that's quite impressive. And it's got leaf springs on wishbones I think, a bit of a combination. And you've got your gun, your cannon and over here you've actually got the street lamp, can you see that? Street lamp? Bent. And then the next to it is the straight cannon and the mantlet. <laughs> really nice kit that. Everybody loves this one. Everybody says, oh yeah I had that, I had that. I think we've all had it. I've built it right here, albeit streetless, unfortunately. No street, but I do have... Here's one I prepared earlier. 
<laughs> so there we go. My Puma armoured car. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> okay, that just leaves us with the final four. Um, I've got the Panther now. I did, I did build the Panther, but I haven't got one in recent years, so I haven't got one to show you. But this is uh, quite. A, these are quite hard to get hold of. The Matchbox Panther, and this is a really prime example. I've got two of them. I think this is the better of the two in terms of the box. And this is an early one, another seventy-three with a window in it. Um, again, it's not the most imaginative um, diorama, it's just a little shrub at the side of a sort of a muddy field. It's supposed to be in Italy. But it's nice, you know, and again it's got some... Um, you've got a nice paint scheme you can put on it. The Italian scheme is this... Um, almost like an autumnal style to it. Green and brown and yellow. Um, and of course on the side, as usual, they advertise all these ones we've just been talking about, the Firefly, the Comet, the Humber, I'll come to that in a second, and the Panzer III. Um, yeah, let's have a look at this Panther then, because I think, I say, there's not many of them around, and maybe some of you haven't seen it. It's got big old tracks on this one. Uh, whacking great, huge tracks. We've got, as I say, what is a rather bit of an unimaginative base, I think, this one. Not one of the... Not one of the more creative designs. A lot of wheels and bogies, obviously, and drive wheels and sprockets. Many, many, many. And you've got your little bit of a shrub there, tree. Then you've got your top hole. Nicely detailed, in fairness. It's, they did a nice job. It's even got the, the barrel lock for the gun. And there's your gun barrel itself here. Turret. And your mantle, your rear. Uh, rear wall chassis with the bogies and the main, sorry, the main glasses front mantlet, I should say, main gun mantlet. Um, and then the sponsons down the side there. Excellent, isn't it? Really nice. Another cracker. Just wish they'd done a bit more with that diorama on this one. It just seems a little bit too much like the Vespi. Uh, well, the Vespi was better, wasn't it? Or did one out of play? No, it's like the, um, not the Vespi. It's like the Panzer III, they've almost done the same thing with it. It's a bit too similar, I think. I'm going to have to get this back in here. I'm going to zoom you out so you can see what's going on. It's just the usual trade-off. I'm trying to get things into boxes. You know what it's like. <laughs> Never easy. Never easy. We don't want them sitting around getting mixed up or anything. So in it must go. Super, 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 super. Okay. Go on. <laughs> There's the rubber bands, they never want to go back in the box. They just don't. It's just, they're very grippy. Okay, then, the last three. Three of my favourites. The Humber armoured car. Isn't this nice, this scout car? Everybody, it's another one that everybody loves. Uh, because it's, if, you've ever, if you've ever built it, it's really, really cute. Uh, great artwork, very dramatic battle going on in the background here. North Africa again. All your colour call-outs are here on the side. Uh, this one's been put in a bag inside, so I think we'll probably not open it. But what I will do is I'll show you the finished article. And here it is. Complete with the little man looking out with his binoculars, a scout car commander doing some observation. He's uh, spotting, perhaps for the artillery even, who knows. But look at it, it's such a tiny thing, it's such a dinky little thing. And again, I sort of semi-painted this one, I didn't, I left it natural plastic, but I just did a bit of weathering on it to make it look good from a distance. You've got a pool there with a, a dead tyre sticking out of it, like an oily pool. Kind of blue, blue from oil, I think. And you know, again, it's uh, it's cool, isn't it? It's a nice little model. We all remember. I remember that when I first built this, I was so made up with that. I thought it was just fantastic. Such a nice little model. 
And again, you're getting all that for 25 pence, which even in you know the mid 70s, that's a lot of uh, kit for your money, really, for 25p, which is what could you buy for 25p? You can get you know, a bag of sweets, really, big bag of sweets. That's about it. So you know, it's it's offering you a lot. You're getting a lot back. As I said, how they make any money or did make any money, I don't know. I think we'll not bother with that because it's just going to be too awkward to get it in and out. So we'll give that one a miss, but um, it's a beautiful kit. Very strong recommend that one to you. Then we've got the Yag Panther, and here's what I prepared earlier. Uh, again, I'm a bit deliberately lazy on the painting to make it remain matchbox-like. Uh, this is where it bursts through a wall. So I've got the street scene on this one crashing through somebody's house, or once was I think, and demolishing all the uh, the bricks. And here we are, uh, another bent lamp post. There seems to be a lot of bent lamp posts in these dioramas. Uh, a nice model, a nice model. And of course if you want to, you can go to town with it and weather it up and if you don't mind about, you know, like me, I, I'm such an advocate for Matchbox, I, I just want it to remain just to retain a small amount of that childhood uh, wonder, if you like, about it. So that's why I don't go and do a proper paint job on it. Because I think that would defeat the object of uh, such a wonderful thing. I, I want to be reminded of the ones I built back in the day. Which that kind of does quite nicely. And it's got, again, some nice artwork in Normandy. This is, this is a, uh, I was reading a couple of accounts about um, some of the commanders of these Yag. Yeah, Panthers. Uh, one story about them, I think it was at, maybe at the Battle of Mortan uh, in Normandy, uh, where they used to ride around with just shirt sleeves and shorts because it was so warm in the weather. And you know, you could see these tank commanders just in their t shirts. Uh, this is a uh, fighting around Khan, it says. And it, says it looks like it's just destroyed a British Comet tank or a Comet or a Crom, I'm not sure. Um, this is one of the later issues because it's an 83, no box, just a barcode. Barcodes were really new things at the time, that's the latest thing. And here you can see it, so it doesn't look terribly different to mine, does it? That artwork, quite similar. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's, uh, let's have a look inside, let's have a look inside. I won't, do, I won't deprive you on this one. Okay, it's a late one, so it's got black and white instructions again. Rather better, better quality these tracks, these rubber bands. A little bit more heavy duty than some of them. Here we've got our uh, main and the main hull, obviously, um, which is uh, such a unique looking tank, isn't it? Well, uh, it's not a tank, is it? It's a tank destroyer. And you've got your bits of wall here. You can see you've got your your outer uh, gun mantlet here, which is quite impressive. We've molded that quite nicely. You've got your gun here. Um, obviously, you've got your chassis with the bogies. That's the exterior. Oops. That is the exterior there. And then you've got your rear panel. You've got your storage boxes. Um, it looks very cool. And then you've got this, um, this bit of demolished house and then all the bricks which you're going to have to paint of course. I cheat at that, I think I just sort of airbrushed it in about five minutes. <laughs> and then you've got all the many many wheels and drive sprockets, and, uh, idle wheels and drive sprockets, road wheels. Good solid sprue that. Nice, nice model. Everybody sort of remembers building their first Yank Panther. They do. Quite a memorable film. So that one goes in there. And that just leaves us with our old friend the Chaffe, doesn't it? And this is a this is a nice one. This is where I did a, I did make a bit more effort on this one. And the reason I did in this particular kit, he says, trying to get those traps out. <sighs> I made a bit more effort with this one, the Chaffe. And the reason was um, the Bridget Remagen movie, war film, 
uh, starred George Seagal and he died uh, just a year ago now uh, and so I did it as a bit of a, uh, a tribute to him out of respect and uh, of course these tanks do feature heavily at the start of the film where they are running along at very high speed did about 35-40 miles an hour I think uh, running along the railway to try to stop the railway from uh, getting across the bridge at Remarkin and then later in the film they appear again shooting their uh, shooting their cannons uh, uh, over on the other side of the bridge to uh, to bombard the German positions uh, but there you go so that's that's what that's what they look like if you make the effort and they do look really nice don't they it's a really nice kit <laughs> can't fault it really Got um, there's even I think it's an MG34 that's in that abandoned German uh, defensive position there. So there we go. That's the bridge at Remagen Chaffe M24. Here's the kit. Um, now this one I can't show you because it's all cellophane wrapped. It's like a completely mint example from 1983. Yes, it's 83. And somebody's wrapped that. I think maybe I think it's the original wrapping. I don't think it's been rewrapped. Uh, and it looks pretty, uh, pretty impressive, doesn't it? Quite a, quite a nice kit. Again, th this is one where they made a bit more effort in terms of thinking and creativity on the, uh, on the diorama. They've made a little bit of thought, forethought gone into it. So it's, uh, it's got this uh, decal you can use, which is a Normandy one. So I, I didn't do that. I've wanted to do the Remagen one, but you could do. You could do. And there we have it. That's kind of the um, that's kind of the the cream of the crop, really, of the uh, of the purple range of uh, of the Matchbox armor. I'll try and restack them across here for you and bring them back. There we go. I don't think I'll stack them up. They'll only fall over if I try and do it now on camera. You've got quite a selection there. Um, if only there were, you know, if only a manufacturer like Airfix or somebody else would just take on board what was good about these. You never meet anyone who says, I didn't like those dioramas, I thought they were rubbish. You never meet anyone who says that. Everybody liked it. It added something, especially on such a small model. Brings it to life, it creates a scene, it creates a story of its own. Um, and I think that you know, Airfix if you're listening, or Ravel. I mean, Ravel have reissued these kits. Don't forget, you can get all these that I've got here. I think every one of them is available uh, through Ravel. Uh, they'll be in one colour plastic, but hey, that's not a problem, is it, really? I, I guess that's not, not too much of a concern. Won't be in the original box. Um, but if it's 176, it's a matchbox reboxing by Ravel. So don't be put off. You know, you can get them for about £10, £12. Pounds. And, you know, you can have a lot of fun. You can as a weekend build... Um, or if you've got any, uh, you know, sons, daughters, nieces, nephews, and they're interested in tanks or anything like that, you could have some fun and get them building these. For £24, you can have two of them. You can build one, get them to build one. You know, go for something nice and simple. Uh, maybe the, the Comet's a nice easy one, actually. Comet, Chaffe, they're very straightforward. And the Firefly, you know. I say you can build them in an afternoon. What is there not to like about what is there not to like? I mean, I look at these now and I just, I just remember those. I remember the long hot summer of 1976. It takes me straight back to that, that event. That's a really nice weather. It's, it's a wonderful um, nostalgic trip down memory lane, isn't it? I hope you enjoyed it. I um, hope this has um, made you sort of um, maybe want to go and get yourself some more. And I say, if you go for the the Ravel reboxings, they're still available. Um, the most of them will come with the same decals that you've seen here as well, in most cases. So don't be um, don't be deterred. You know, don't spend thirty or forty pounds on one of these on on eBay just because some you know highway robber like me is putting them on the market. No, I'm not. I'm not selling these at the moment. But if I was, they wouldn't be going cheap because they're all in such good condition. You know. Uh, we've got some that are just original mint, never been out of the wrapper, you know. So, I mean, those would be going for £25 at least, I think, maybe 30 Um They're not replaceable, you know. And I, I built the Chaffe, I built the Matchbox one, but it was in a very crushed box. I have kept it, 
but the box was really poor so that's why I built it um, but I think I did it justice and, uh, and I think I've got the Comet I think that was also in a bad box so I've got a nice one here uh, that's, the, that's the thing to do build the bad one and I said I had a couple that had bits of street scenes missing and no pavement no street uh, roadway so that's why I built the Puma and the uh, the Haname. Um Somebody's actually offered me. Um, he's going to send me a bit of street. It's got. I think he's got another problem where he's got other bits missing. So, uh, yeah, I'm not going to name names, but uh, yeah, I hope that comes through. That'd be really cool. If it does, I'll be giving you a plug, and uh, we'll do a little talk about that when it's all done and dusted. You know. Anyway, I hope you found the whole Matchbox 50th experience enjoyable and interesting, uh, and spurs you on to go and uh, have a good look at some of these kits yourself. Um, if you've got them in the stash. <coughs> Maybe you can get them out and decide to build one or two of them. But remember, if you build one of these original ones, every time you build an original matchbox, another one, a little angel dies because you can't replace them, okay? You can only replace them with the Revell reboxing. So be, be mindful. These are not going to be... You'll never get another box. You'll never get another two-colour kit. Um, and that's why you should go for the Revell one, really. If you want to have the finished product, yeah. What you could do, buy the Revell one, and then um, perhaps if you look around, people like me keep the boxes, sometimes sell them. You can always buy, you know, as part of a diorama, you could put it in the background with the original box behind. Bit of an idea for you. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the videos. Um, thanks very much for joining me, really appreciate it. Please give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and tell me which ones you liked. Uh, there's lots I haven't covered. Um, yeah, there's plenty more, plenty more. There's that little French tank that everybody talks about. Everybody, everybody likes that kit as well. I've forgotten. Is it Renault? I can't remember. Um, I think it's two, they do two, I think. Um, because, of course, Matchbox was a big um, seller in France. It was their second biggest market. And that's why all the instructions are in English and French. But, uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Give us your stories and, and you know, how old you were and what you, how much you paid for them. That's always very interesting. <laughs> Uh, and you know maybe this has helped you go back in time and uh, yeah made you think of good days when you were younger uh, and the fun you used to have when you were you know just spending your pocket money at the weekend <laughs> like me anyway thanks a lot um, please look after yourselves until the next video comes up don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and if you have ding the notification bell and I look forward to seeing you all very very soon in the meantime stay safe stay well Thanks very much for your time and bye for now.